welcome, thank you for coming. Uh, we will be talking about testing here today. You sure you get in the right room, right? Testing, not development, testing. Right, uh, so this is me, Shura. I work on different technical aspects of testing Java, Java effects, right? So in particular, the UI testing is my, the automated UI testing is my baby. Uh, so uh, I will be showing what kind of tools we have to offer for you guys to automate your testing, basically in a nutshell, that's what it is, right? This is usual stuff, don't believe whatever I say. Then going on, this is an important disclaimer, though it seems irrelevant. We are developers. So the best way we are, team, our team, quality team, the best way to test and the only way to test Java or uh, Scene Builder or NetBeans or FX is to use it, meaning to develop applications with it, right? Hence, we're a developer. And that explains why we have tools, right? It's relatively easy for us to have to develop our own tools, and that's what we do. And that explains what kind of tools we have. Now, uh, I will be talking a little bit as to how test lives, uh, how to create it, how to study the UI for test creation, how to write it in source code, how to record and replay, quote, quote it, how to do more coding, and then some other stuff, such as how to deal with images and how to deal with native UI. So um, this life cycle is a little bit different than uh, any other software life cycle. Test is a unit which is designed to be executed repeatedly and reported status, right? Pass or fail, as simple as that. That's what we call test, at least. The, the, the term could be interpreted differently. And so an important thing here is you develop it once and you keep executing it and every once in a while it fails, right? It fails because the product changes. I mean, it's normal and you have to figure out whether there's a test problem or a pro pro product problem and then act appropriately. So the, the support for test code is what, what's important. That's what's driving the whole thing, actually. So uh, th these are the tools which we use. We use a couple of tools for to explore UI. This, this is needed for us to be able to create the test code. Then we don't use recording, but I'm gonna show whatever we have in this area anyway. We don't because remember we are developers. For us, it's faster to use code completion in that means than any other tool, right? Then uh, of course there should be driver which uh, simulates user actions, such as clicking, scrolling, typing, whatever. <clears throat> then there are test harnesses. This is an important subject, or pretty boring. And then there is an image merge. Should you be uh, needing to use images in your testing? Hope not. Problems, right? And then uh, test with LDB, of course. And then that means ID for us. That's the tool to use. So first of all, how do we how do we uh, explore how the application is built, right? I have a very simple application right here, which is basically a file browser. I'm, not, I'm gonna execute it in a second. So what I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create a package, call it test, right? I'm gonna create a new file with it, new Java class, uh, call it uh, launcher. This is a source tree, launcher. Right. Create the main class here, and uh, uh, from 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 this thing, I want to run the, the UI which I'm going to test. That's gonna be up executor. Come on, executor, execute my block, and the main class of the application happened to be main. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is just the application execution. This is not interesting. So now I'm gonna say run another tool which is called browser. Uh, start run browser. And I'm run it. Oh no, I'm not gonna run it. Yes, it throws an application and uh, AWT exception because it's written with AWT long ago. So this is the application which we're gonna play with, right? This is a simple file browser. It could, could go inside directory, it could go back. There are the history, show height in files, and a table with a, this is a, this is a test application which I'm gonna be using for testing. I'm 
can resize this guy and, and hit refresh. Now, so this is a scene, right? Obviously. It has V-Box within it, it has border pane, very similar to Cineview, right? <laughs> but uh, it existed long before Cineview, so it's an excuse. It is actually, I was talking about where it resides. Uh, then uh, there is a button, text field, comma box, very, very clear what it is, right? Then there is this guy, and that's what we actually have in the applications. We don't know who that is, right? What it is. It looks like a table. Well, it is a table, and if you go within it, uh, it has table view skin, which is probably which probably means it is a table. But it, we can do better than that. For testing, we have this page, which basically t says where it's going from. So it extends table view. It is a table view. We list uh, Jimmy interfaces for this table. Let me select something else. Checkbox. So checkbox is selectable. It has values, and we also show properties. Those properties which we can use in testing. This is these are properties of controls. These are properties of our tooling, right? Very similar. We can use uh, scenic view. Right? I'm just gonna run it. This is the uh, pretty similar in functionality application coming from our control development team of FX. The difference is it is written in uh, FX, uh, in FX, with FX in mind. It, should, it could actually change the uh, change the scene run. So if I select the radio button and I change the style plus volume, okay, it's gonna be different. It should be different. Work. Right, it does work. It changed the look and feel, right? Uh, so um, I, I will not be talking a lot. I will talk a lot about the scenic view. You can try it yourself. It's available as well as, as the browser, actually. Okay. No. Now go back to my slides. So this was good browser. This was scenic view. We do this to understand how the UI is built from what pieces, right? Now uh, this is just exploratory part. Now we need to create some tests. This is fairly easy. Again, this map means I'm going and creating a test a test package. Right. I'm gonna create a new GUnit test. We're gonna be using GUnit right now. I'll talk about it later. Uh, test. Right. So first thing I need to do, I need to start the application, which which we already know how to do. I just copy this line. All right, right here. Right. I don't need this one. <coughs> this. This. Right. Uh, so, uh, so we had a scene, right, on the screen. Uh, we take the name of the whatever we had on the screen and add doc work d o c d o c k doc. The name is silly, I know, but it turned out to be this way, and it's too late to change. Scene. This is gonna be new. Scene doc. So there are a bunch of constructors. So these constructors look for a scene. Actually, not look, but wait for a scene to be there. For the scene conforming for a scene, should I say, conforming to criteria which you supply. It could be title, it could be lookup criteria, it could be index, it could be nothing, right? Like we have one scene right now, so that's good enough. That 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 line will, will wait for a scene to appear on screen. Now we have a text field there which is text input control, doc, right? Field, new text input control doc. Again, we're gonna look within the scene for it. Scene as parent. Just, just one field for now. 
and we're gonna click three times on it so, so we uh, select all the text. Using mouse, click three times. As simple as that. But uh, you may be asking yourself, this is very simple code, right? <laughs> and this is, these are obvious operations. Why should they even bother writing this code? It could be generated or scripted. Yeah, and so there is that concept of record and replay. So basically, you run your UI, for those of you who haven't heard about, about it, you run your UI almost normally, perform some actions, then hit some magic button. Those actions are magically written into some file in some format, and then just you put it into test harness, and then it, it, you go, go home, take an app or something, and it's running for you without your participation. This is good. It looks good, except uh, it has problems. Of course, it's easy and fast to create such thing, right? Uh, no coding skills needed, but wait a minute. What if the UI is responsible for a database update? How are you gonna, from UI, from recording and play, verify that the database is updated, right? Or file created on a file system? Basically, in most cases, it doesn't require, if, if a tool is smart, doesn't require that. Uh, whatever, however smart the tool is, right? There are cases when you need to verify something extra, such as in our file browser, we would be verifying that the number of files in the table view and the names of files in the table view are appropriate, right? It's hard to do it through UI. You could go to some other dialog and check that, like, such as this uh, database update, but it's not a smart idea. And the high maintenance cost. So the terms in which the which in which the tests are written is important because that basically dictates how often you're gonna be needing to change that code. And I have this article which I was told came out nice, so go read it. Basically, I wrote it a few years ago. It basically says uh, how the recorder play in my view should be done, and that's the way we're approaching it. Okay, and it's positive; it's not negative. It basically tells how it should be done versus why not to do it, though it may look this way at first. Right, so we have something. We are not fully there yet, but we have something. I'm going back to my code, to my launcher code. I'm going to add another line, which is files test constructor. Start. And I'm gonna execute, and yet again, we're gonna get the application and, and another window. Yeah, the screen resolution kind of sucks. Right, so first thing first, in our application, what we want to do is we want to type a new location, right? I move my mouse here, and it mouse going down. And hit a magic combination. Control Shift C right now. So what I see right here is that we're gonna be we're gonna be finding a scene, right? We're gonna be looking for it by title. Title may change if we go to another directory. Not a smart idea. Let's just pick any scene, right? And then we're gonna be looking for a text field, right? Again, text gonna change. So let's just look. Okay. I'll be talking about lookup criteria later on another examples, right? Then we're gonna double click, triple click. That's how far we got this, you need to do manually. That's the part I haven't written yet. So we're gonna use text input control as mouse. We're gonna click three times, okay? Now what? What do we do with this stuff? Now we save it into a file. Let me give a proper name. It's going to be test. Test. Right? It's going to be uh, NetBeans G unit or G unit. I'll explain the difference in, in a second. But that's what we have so far. It's really easy to add more stuff. Than this. So we're going to save it into a file. It's called UI test. Okay, let's go see what we got. Work. So this is our 
the white test. And that is the <laughs> difference between NetBeans JUnit or a simple JUnit. So I'm using NetBeans false here to find, to uh, hide the actual source code. Uh, right. Uh, first thing first, we need to start the application and enter it, right? We already know how to do that. Let's just copy this line. Now, uh, it's like, now what? So I changed the source code, I'm gonna save it, right? And the source code gonna be, source code gonna be written? Well, no, of course not, I'm gonna show you in a second. We're actually dealing with that nicely right now. So what I wanna do is I wanna type myself what I'm going to. It's gonna be test data, right? And what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna, instead of this, yes, I will add another step. I'll say that we're going to use text input control as selection text, and I'm going to type a value. I'm a Linux user. I discovered that they have some backslashes just a couple of days ago before the demo. Test data. And then what we want to do is we want to click on folder one, double click on folder one to go into it. I'm hitting the magic combination, right? And uh, we're going to test that this file appears here. So I'm going to hit the magic combination again. This is all I need to do. Except I didn't do double click, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Back. Folder one. Uh -huh. Step we're going to use um, the list item. Notice that we're going to be using list item, so this is an object. Uh, we're going to be treating it as a mouse. We're going to be clicking it two times. Okay, so here we're going to save it now. The code which we've written is still here and actually all the code which is written between steps is going to be here and this the uh, the surrounded by comments thing is going to be replaced uh, this is this code is not going to work because i made a mistake on purpose i didn't do enter i didn't push enter okay you could do that through you through the ui as well but i was going to show what happens if the test fails fail now yes thank you so you got an exception Timeout expired exception, something didn't happen. So let me do a click right here. And then we to mouse click. Oh yeah, oh, I was going to push enter, sorry. Keyboard push key. There is any no. Right, so that's pretty much what we've got, except we have a property verification part. So you could uh, add another step and say you're gonna verify of the text input controls, so if the position or the text, that's the two properties it has, right? And enter value you're gonna be using, okay? Gonna delete this one. So going back to slides. So this constructor, what we can do right now, we can uh, record and replay lookup, right? In read Java code, we write Java code properly, only the stuff which was generated, saving information into comments, uh, supporting JUnit, supporting NetBeans. So what we are going to be able to do, we're gonna be able to load the thing back, and this is gonna be a few uh, days of work because it was written with that in mind, actually, the code, so it's, gonna, it's not gonna be too hard. True recording. Recognize not only the lookup information, but also the actual the action that may take some time to implement, right? 
Test and G support, this is clear, that's just another sample there. Uh, Integrated with GUI browser. It's only natural to be to want to select a control in GUI browser because you see all the properties, you see all the layout, you see all the hierarchy. Instead of moving your mouse on a real UI, you would want to select it there, obviously. Eclipse support, I tried really quick. I didn't find a way to implement false in, in Eclipse. Maybe I'm missing some obvious, sorry, Eclipse users. I didn't find it. And NetBeans plugin integration. So in NetBeans, you develop effects applications, right? We will do. We are thinking about putting the recorder there as well, once it's more or less complete. So to compare it with recording replay, when it will have a true recording, fast initial creation, uh, yes. No coding skill needs in simple cases, yes. Low maintenance and constraints, proper plugin. So the whole thing is written uh, pluggable. So FX support is actually a plugin to the core of recording. And it's not too big of a plugin, actually. So. Uh, while implementing that, I was doing it this way. Boy, I missed Lambda as well when I was doing that. Right. Uh, it is flexible, as you can add your own code. But the uh, plugin maintenance, and guys, we tried. We tried to implement this thing for an NPN years ago. The plugin maintenance takes a lot. So basically, you have to develop your application in terms of your domain model, your library, so sorry, test library in terms of the domain model. And on top of that, you have to implement UI for that library. It's hard. It takes a lot. So for NetBeans, we were developers, and so we just dropped the idea after playing it. Again, this article pretty much explains. Now, JamieFX. The source code which was there is written with JamieFX API. JamieFX is a Java library. It's not a product. It's not a tool. It's not a test harness. It's a Java library which allows to simulate user input. It is on uh, OpenGDK, on OpenGFX. It's based on Jimmy Core. There's such thing as Jimmy Core, who supports for JavaFX. So what is Jimmy Core? So the Core is a UI library testing. Uh, sorry. Yes, UI library, UI testing library, which basically doesn't know anything in particular about any particular library. So and I'm going to show some pictures, which may explain that stuff. It has its, its own API for lookups, for control interfaces. We've seen as selectable mouse. Those are control interfaces. It has support for properties and some other stuff. So Jimmy Core syntax. Yes, a little bit, just, just one simple line. So right here, when we were working for text input control, right? Right here, what I was, what I was, would be doing if I would be using Jimmy Core syntax, I would say, new. No, sorry, uh, root. At least it's v zero. V zero, lookup for a scene by criteria. We'll pick up just any. We have only one scene as parent. Is this the right parent? I'm sorry. Yeah, this 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 is a Jimmy parent, and again, it existed before JavaFX. Sorry. Uh, as parent, uh, for nodes. I'm sorry. For nodes. Yes. And then again, look up and here text field and criteria for text field, which could be anything. Yeah, which basically you implement a Boolean method which tells whether this is the control you're looking for or not. There are, of course, criteria to look by text, by ID, by this, by that. There is a criteria called any and stuff like that. So a little bit clumsy uh, at the end. At the end, hold on. At the end, you would say again, as say uh, what are the text, and this is again Jimmy text, and you would say type. Come on, what? So this is Jimmy text. 
I don't know. It, <laughs> this is what's supposed to be. So it looks a little bit more clumsy. It's possible to use. But uh, Jimmy FX adds stuff on it, which allows uh, things to work better. So in a way, you could use a you think of Jimmy Core as of uh, stencil, right? That's the word I looked up in a dictionary. Uh, with the holes cut, right? So it has its shape, it can function, but it doesn't know many things. So in particular, it doesn't know how to operate mouse. Now, we have an implementation for mouse based on AWT mouse, right? Which can move and generate native events. Except that implementation doesn't know how to get coordinates of effects known. So it has a little hole within it itself, the AWT mouse on the right. So there is stuff how to scroll a scroll bar, right? How to get children of a parent in effects hierarchy. All that is not known to Jamie Core. All that is provided later. It's provided by Jamie FX, which defines how to get scenes, nodes, how to get items of a list item or a text field, or I'm sorry, <laughs> of a table or a tree, uh, how to get coordinates, how to scroll a scroll bar. The actual scrolling is again implemented in Jamie Core. What Jamie FX specifies is where to press the mouse and how far to move it, for how long, for but provides a conditions actually to which to satisfy which this thing needs to be moved and stuff like that. Uh, get text of level, of course, stuff like that. That's all implemented in Jamie FX. So we take the stencil, we flip in the pieces, and that's the Jamie FX. Okay. You don't need to know all that complexity is behind the scene, but nevertheless. So as far as Jamie FX support going uh, going on, uh, sorry, Java FX support going on or GMFX support transformations so that they are transparent to test. So you can take a tree view, you can flip it, turn it, whatever, use whatever transformation in FX, apply to it, and then call a method expanding a node. It will click in the right place. So however it's transformed, it doesn't matter. Uh, animation is hard because basically you have to replicate the animation logic on the test site and uh, Hard. There, there is some support in Jamie, but it's generally hard. 3D, we're just thinking about it. I don't even know how much we need. Would we need an API to click on 3D position? I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> so, two things I wanted to show here a little bit about Jamie first. First of all, and that's where the coding comes in, right? So first of all, we are verifying that there is a particular item in the list. That's not enough. We want to check that there are two files. One is named this way, and the other one is named this way. That will be proper testing, right? So we want to do assert. No. No. Asserts in, that do not work in the UI testing. Bless you. Because uh, everything in UI takes time. So you put assert here, and at some moment, it is going to fail because the things just didn't happen right away. Okay, so we need to put a weight in here. There is, of course, a support for that, which is going to be, let me see, this user, yeah, so V6 is, uh, where is the list view? There is the, the V5. So V5, grab. So wraps are actually the, the uh, level of API of Jamie Core. And we're going to be, the, we're trying to propagate everything into doc, but not everything yet. Uh, I'm going to say wait state, I'm going to define a state, Integer. well for simplicity I'll just check the number of the items, okay, just to save time, there's going to be two items, right, and here you return uh, v6, uh, control, which is an object, but it's actually, oh, no, not V6, V5, that's fine. V5, uh, control, which is a list view, right? Get items, and this is not right either. Why? Because this code is not an event queue. So you, need, you would need another runnable and stuff, but there are shortcuts to that. So you could see V5, get items. So this is executed on event queue. The inter internally, it has the same stuff, right? State and everything. Why, why, does, it, why does it 
Why doesn't the Jimmy at Mexico just do a wait for you? When you do a mouse click, why doesn't it wait for that click event to actually be processed so that when I get the return to the next line, I know that the platform is, is actually processed that way? So it does. So when you type a text in a text field, the type method only returns after the text is there. In this particular case, it uh, waits until the events are delivered. But then there is an event listener, which can uh, generate some, uh, maybe offline, lower the content of the directory. And that's an application logic. That's not UI library logic, right? So the possibly, Jimmy could not possibly know that after clicking on folder one, it, it got to get two items in the in a list, okay? And that's where it is. The Jamie code contains all this stuff, whatever is possible within it. So selecting, when they select an item, it waits for it to be selected. When you type a text, it waits for a text to be there. But in this particular case, it doesn't know. It could not possibly know what to expect. So I'm verifying how many items is on the list after I insert, enter a directory. Very impossible to know that, but that's a good question. Anyway, uh, yeah, stuff like that. And now we're talking to sustainability, right? This test is not sustainable. So should there should should uh, text field be replaced by a combo box? It's gonna fail. And you you assume to have hundreds of tests, right? We have hundreds of tests. Uh, so what are you gonna do? Go change all the text? It's easy when like. So, when a caption changed, you just you just go re replace all of them, right? But with a logic change, it's not going to be done. So this whole code, roughly this, should go into a, a method. And that is possible if you provide a plugin for the test constructor. A plugin which would work in terms of the application you're testing. That's what I was talking about. It's possible the API is there. So that was GMFX. So test harness, boring part. We're good on time. Uh, there is JUnit, right? We use JUnit for test development, honestly. But at the same time, we use another harness, which provides us with exclude lists, known failures. It doesn't, but it's a separate conversation. Distributed execution on top of that. So uh, what would you do if a test files on one platform and doesn't file on other platforms, and the fix takes a lot of time, right? Would you exclude it everywhere? That could be done with JUnit, right? We don't want that. We don't do. We want to execute it where possible. Hence, we need an exclude list. So for for the, for this heavy heavy stuff, we use a test harness called JT Harness by coincidence, used by it for GCK as well. It is really pluggable. You insert three pieces into it. How do you find tests? How to execute tests? And how to define environment for test execution? Interview, test script, and test finder. Okay? And, and basically can do whatever you want. So in our case, we, through the interview, define whether the test is going to be executed as a standalone application, as a GLP, as an applet, as in swing interoperability, as in SWT interoperability, with one flip, the same test work everywhere. So this is the heavy lifting which we which we use GT harness for, and then running. We, yeah, we maintain the test results database, so we can actually say whether the failure is uh, the same or not for the same reason or not. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Now images uh, better not better not do it at all, right? Because they are really, really, really fragile. They are platform dependent. They, they are very sensitive to source code changes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if you're using uh, controls, existing effects controls, don't worry about it, we've done it. Okay, we have thousands of images in the database. We have different sets of images for Prism on different platforms for J2D rendering for this and for that. We done it, but if you render something on your own, right, you have no choice. So let me show how the tool, which is still available, how we do it. Let me find it. This is uh, again part for tooling. 
So I have a couple of images, sample images right here. So this is uh, this is a real image. So this one it says it's different. It looks the same though, and this is a color diff, right? It looks the same. It's black. It's supposed to be the same. There is a magic button highlight difference. Well, these pixels are wrong. <laughs> okay. So what this tool does, it, it allows for you, it hides all the complexity of loading images and you know, crossing the uh, information. It, you only do what you have to do. You analyze the image, you go analyze the source code, you make a decision. Is this, this a bug or is this not a bug? If this is a bug, you hit one button, well, it doesn't create bugs for you, but it provides a list right at the end. Or you just copy the actual image into the reference. Say, no, it's not a bug, it's okay. Copy it there. That's it. You hit one button, focus goes to the next one, to the next image. And for, just to have some fun, I went to Wikipedia and took spot the difference pictures out of it. Really easy, right? Well, uh, there are a couple of unintended differences here on this picture. But let me show them. So, for example, this uh, pin uh, in uh, Granny's hair. Above it, there is a little, little something which wouldn't be seen if not for highlight difference, right? Uh, there are a few white pixels here, actually. You can see that the color is almost white, okay? They are not here. And so you can uh, you can take closer look. This is a micros microscopic lens over here on the pin, and you can see the color in this square, the actual color. Stuff like that. And you can actually select the comparator that you're going to be using. So we're using different algorithms to compare images. Pixel by pixel comparison, that's this one. Or we can say that number of pixels or percentage of pixels could go wrong. Or the color distance between two images could go wrong. Color distance would be distance between two points in 3D RGB space. Okay, roughly. Uh, and uh, of course, new uh, comparison algorithms could be. Uh, thrown in any time. So that's that. Uh, now, here's the question. What if UI opens native dialog? What's going to happen, right? So we have solution. We have partial solution. I will be talk about other platforms in a second. But for Windows, we have uh, There is a simple application which simply add, opens a, a AWT file chooser, which is a native file chooser by coincidence, right? And we have a test for it. Jamie Windows test packages, simple test. So what it does, uh, originally we wanted to do uh, whatever accessibility API could provide in Windows. And we discovered this uh, UI automation framework, which basically can do anything. So we basically, for Windows, we can do just about anything. For uh, it, uh, yeah, actually source code. So it uses the Jamie Core API directly. So to extend Jamie Core to, to support some other library, you just need to write this, <laughs> this much code, basically. You've got this clumsy API, but it's working. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, so for for that for Windows, we have implemented the accessibility access to accessibility API through, through for GNOME as well. Yes. Okay. Source code. Oh, it's, it's not a slide. It's the code. Yes, uh, lambdas. I'm waiting for lambdas. No, no, no. You can instead of uh, using uh, writing over the you check and search for the name. Right. You can to write a JQuery test runner. Ah, I see. I see. Test runner. I see. I see. Then you can uh, use uh, annotation to say look up by name. You can eliminate all the columns and just check the elements if you can. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Uh, the
the uh, Jimmy Windows was created with minimal time spent. Yeah. Yeah. No, right now, no, I don't. So the, the, the whole point is, we are, that's not our prim primary job to develop tools, right? We are testing, that's our responsibility. So the Jimmy, uh, Jimmy design allows us easy to extend for testing some other stuff. And it's already paid off, believe me. So Jimmy, oh, I'm sorry, Java FX 1.3 and Java FX 2.0 already paid off. Okay. That, that's it, it's already worked. And so this, this is the Windows, uh, Jimmy Windows, they created just exactly this way. So that's uh, just about the last slide I have. Where you can, and uh, what you can get from what you just see, right? So Jimmy Core is there on, I'll show link on the next page, uh, in source of binary view, image merge, image merge. Uh, there is an image merge written in Swing, which basically have more or less the same functionality. One functionality it doesn't have is like this one. So you move your mouse here and you hit shift and you just throw the original. So these bells and whistles are not in the swing version, but other than that, this is the same functionality. Jimmy image merge effects needs to be polished. I have problems with that code. Uh, test constructor, not yet. Gonna be open source as soon as we have something decent and at least uh, being able to load the test back from the comments. Jimmy Windows <coughs> approval already gotten. Need to do facelifting, put in the license, that's it. Jimmy Gnome, same stuff. Jimmy Mac, we have some problems with native trading on Jimmy Mac. I, I'm not, I wouldn't be able to talk more about it because some other guys is doing it, but they, they, we have we have to resolve that. I don't know how to do that yet. Jimmy FX is there. Jimmy FX browser is there in source. I, again, I figure out how to do the binary and where I got all the approvals, almost. So as soon as I got all the approvals, so the binaries are gonna be there for now, you have to do it yourself. In fact, this constructor is a tiny piece piece on top of uh, this constructor from core. Of course, in development, now the uh, platform support story. So the robot is like one of the most important things in this in this stuff. And uh, for Windows, we use Glass Robot, reliable for Mac OS X and for Linux. Well, we have to use AWS Robot, let me put it this way. For Mac, uh, it, it's got to be executed in a separate VM. This all is transparent for tests. You just write your test code and run it. Jimmy decides the best way. If you want to override it, you may override it, but Jimmy defines the best way to reproduce the actions. Uh, and Linux embedded, the kiosk, we ran the test, the same tests which we run on desktop in that configuration. So I'm kind of proud about it. Uh, and finally, how to get Jimmy effects? Well, that's the current way. There is a readme out there. Okay, and the readme list steps. Basically, these three steps would do it for you. So once you run on jar test after a while, I mean, the screens, the uh, windows start flashing on your screen and that's just the Jimmy testing going on in general testing. Uh, Maven, almost there, not yet. Need to figure out how to better integrate it into existing build system. And I'm not that good with Maven myself. So resources, and this is not a typo. So if you want information on JimmyFX, you go to Jimmy JavaNet. If you want information on Jimmy Core, you still go to Jimmy JavaNet, right? And the JimmyFX samples, which is linked from Jimmy JavaNet, one of the first lines, it basically gives you a samples, like how to find something, how to use text, how to push buttons, how to operate list view, etc. And that is it. Should there Questions left. I'm ready to answer. Yes. Um. Right. Uh, we'll have to divide, define what unit test is <laughs> for going there. So basically, if if this if you mean the testing done by developer. It's not such a complicated API. Of course, developer can learn it and use it, right? Uh, uh, the truth is, and historically, it's the other way around. It's us developers who test, who needs to test, and we are optimizing our you know, work. Basically, we're using it for functional testing, though sometimes it's really close to being unit test right? in nature. Yes? Where, where would I find the image merge for Swing at? 
Jimmy, John. Yeah, it's in Jimmy Corey, yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you for coming. <laughs>